We have, as humans, caused one degree Celsius warming on Earth since the last ice age. The scientific support today why staying well below two degrees Celsius is no longer only about reducing the social economic impacts of rising extreme events and warming. It is quite frankly that we risk pushing the on button of irreversible, potentially catastrophic hothouse Earth developments. So this is coming from the 1900s, the Industrial Revolution's kickoff, and now we pass the Second World War and we're moving into the 1970s, the 1980s, 1990s, and look at what's happening. We get warmer and warmer and warmer. Red is plus four degrees Celsius. What we're seeing in the Arctic is extraordinarily worrying. That two degrees Celsius warming on planet Earth would lead on average to a five degrees Celsius warming in the Arctic, which would be a point of no return for the Arctic ice sheets. The rapidly melting and warming Arctic leads to loss of a gradient of the large jet stream and that impacts weather systems and something to take very seriously. Where all the systems on Earth, from the jet stream to the whole ocean conveyor belt, the Amazon rainforest, are systems that regulates the state of the planet and that these systems have tipping points. We have mapped 300 tipping elements in the Earth system. They're completely interdependent. They are the ones that regulates our ability to stay within this golden era of the Holocene. Our fear is that because all systems are connected, that if temperature rises with half a degree, that can connect to more resilient systems that could then cross a tipping point. And you could get a domino effect where two and a half could become three. Three can be three and a half. And it could go on until a point of not stabilizing until we are in a hothouse Earth state of four, five, six degrees Celsius. If we go to three, four degrees Celsius warming, we cannot exclude, as shown here in the Gulf of Mexico, to reach this point of 10 meters sea level rise, losing large parts of Miami, large parts of Florida, and, and basically the Mexican Gulf as we know it in Bangladesh. Now this is 10 meters sea level rise, basically losing a whole nation. It would be a complete eradication of a place on Earth where over 100 million people depend on their lives. Now the food system is central here because overconsumption of processed, unhealthy food with large and larger sources of animal protein contributes to global warming, loss of biodiversity and ecosystem change. This is the source from Brazil of exports of beef, soybean and soy oil across the world. So not only are we causing unhealth and unsustainability through the production systems, but it's also a contributing factor to deforestation of one of the big biomes that regulates the whole stability of the Earth system. So we released the so-called Eat Lancet report, a scientific framework for a healthy diet from sustainable food systems. We have a chance of reducing our climate impacts by half. So it is a flexitarian diet, increasing plant-based proteins, reducing quite drastically red meat, but giving in the order of five servings a week of animal-based protein, two from fish, two from poultry, one from red meat. So if there's a food transformation, there's also an energy transformation. This is the data on renewable energy capacity in the world. We're doubling solar and wind in the world every fourth year. If we continue that trend, we have a very high chance of having 50% of electricity in the world from solar and wind by 2030. Because the challenge here is to come back in to this green desired safe operating space. We've not crossed the hothouse point yet. And that is the biggest challenge of all, to now get the fourth industrial revolution to occur inside this safe operating space on Earth.